A blessed Wednesday to all of you, and thanks for joining me as together we uh, continue with our Wednesday reflections. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know how much I love stories. I just love stories because uh, stories communicate in a powerful way, oftentimes, uh, the things that we, uh, the way we want to be, uh, calls us to what we are called to be, and, and certainly uh, what we should be in our lives. And stories have a way of just getting that across to us, I think, in powerful ways. Whether you're talking about sitting around a campfire and telling ghost stories, or, or uh, you, you turn on the radio and you listen to music, or you know Pandora, or Heart Radio, or YouTube, what, whatever it might be, you know, uh, stories are a powerful thing. And music, the stories in music as well. Um, music are, is a great medium for the telling of stories. Garth Brooks, a uh, famous country uh, singer and composer, songwriter, was once asked, you know, what's, what's the big deal about music? Why are people so attracted to music, particularly country music? And he said, well, because music is a great way to tell a story. And people just love stories. And so we do. You know, we read books uh, for the story, right? It, whether it's historical narrative or drama or poetry or a mystery, whatever it might be, it's the story that draws us in. We keep reading it because the story uh, draws us in. It could be, uh, it, it could be uh, watching TV. TV is about the telling of stories, whether you like comedies or dramas or or history or documentaries, it conveys a story in this day and age, and uh, we're drawn to that. The Lord of the Rings, if you were into that, that's a story, whether you read the book or watched the TV program. By the way, statistics tell us that by the time we are 21, that we have, on average, watched over 30,000 electronic stories electronic stories. That's a pretty amazing thing to think about. Maybe a little scary too, but by the time we're 21, over 30,000 stories. So stories are a blessed, blessed thing to us. And you know what? Jesus knew the power of story too. He told 39 stories, which we call parables, 39 parables that outlined God's story with our story how the power of God's presence in and among us brings us to the place we need to be in our lives, in our hearts, in our walk of faith along the way. So Jesus understood, again, the power of story as, as well. So over these next number of Wednesdays, uh, we are going to be taking a look at stories, uh, stories that, that change the way we think, that, that share with us the power of of, of who we are in essence. And we're gonna be looking at some of Jesus's parables along the way too uh, in our present challenging context. So to kick off our journey, our storytelling journey, I'd like to share with you an old story. It's a old rabbinic Jewish story about the goodness of God. The goodness of God that comes to us in any circumstance. And it is entitled appropriately, God is good. And it goes like this. Two men set out on a journey together. They took a donkey to carry their packs. They took a torch to light their way at night. And a rooster, who was a friend of the donkey. And of course, the rooster sat on the donkey's head during the entire journey. One of the men was a man of faith. One of the men was a man of faith. He was deeply, deeply religious the second was a bit of a skeptic. On the journey, they frequently, frequently talked about the Lord, and, and the one man would say, you know, in all things, God is good. In all things, God is good. Well, we'll see if your opinion bears out on, on the trip, said the second man, the skeptic. Well, shortly before it got dark, shortly before dusk, the two men arrived in a, in a small village where they looked for a place to sleep. Well, despite their frequent requests, no one offered them a night's lodging. 
so reluctantly they kept going. They traveled a, a mile or so outside of town where they decided to sleep, to camp out. I thought you said God is good, the skeptic said sarcastically. Well, the first man replied, God has decided this right here is the best place for us to sleep tonight. So they fixed their beds underneath a, a large tree just off the main road that led to the village, tethering the donkey about 20, 30 yards away. Just as they were about to light the torch, they heard this horrible noise, this horrible screeching and screaming and commotion. A lion had killed the donkey and carried, carried it off to eat it away from the two men. Quickly, the skeptic climbed the tree to stay away from danger. You still say God is good? The skeptic asked with anger. Well, if the lion hadn't eaten the donkey, he would have attacked us for sure. God is good, the man of faith replied. A little while later, a cry from the rooster sent them further up the tree, and from this new vantage point, they saw a wildcat carrying the rooster away in his teeth. Before the skeptic could say a word, the man of faith declared, the cry of the rooster has once again saved us. God is good. A few minutes later, a strong wind arose, blew out the torch, the only comfort of the men in the black of the night. Again, the skeptic taunted his companion. Well, it appears that the goodness of God is working overtime this evening, he said. This time, the, the believer was silent. The next morning, the two men walked back into the village for food. They soon discovered that a large band of outlaws had, had swept into town the previous night and robbed the entire village of all of its possessions. With this news, the man of faith turned to his friend. Finally, it has become clear, he cried out. Had we been given a room in the village last night, we would have been robbed along with all of the other villagers. If the wind had not blown out our torch, the bandits who traveled the road near the place where we slept would have discovered us and taken all our goods as well. It is clear that in all things, God is good. Paul says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Friends, no matter what comes your way, whether it's good as you define good or whether it's bad as you define bad, know with certainty that the Lord is always present. He has always been with you in the past, he is with you now. He will be with you always in the future. Rejoice and give thanks, Paul says later on to the Philippians. Rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. And God's peace will be with you and in you and will guard your heart and your mind and your soul in Christ Jesus. You, my friend, are in the Lord's hands, and there is no better place to be. And now, may God bless you richly this day and every day, and may God use you to be a blessing as well. See you next time.